Coming up on Breeze TV, safety concerns are on the rise following two accidents at the same intersection within a week of each other. Then watch as women's basketball laces up their shoes for their opponents in the sun. Plus how these JMU grads captured their love in an unlikely place. Live from the Allison B. Parker Studio in the School of Media Arts and Design at James Madison University, this is Breeze TV. Welcome back to our first Breeze TV broadcast of this semester. I'm Maggie Rickerby. And I'm Zoe Mowry. A professor's house burned down this month in Harrisonburg, but in the wake of the tragedy, close family friends of Susie Shomo organized a gift card drive and made a Facebook page to raise funds for her lost home. Kelsey Tolbert got the idea when a neighbor's home caught fire in Fairfax and decided that gift cards would be the best way to support her close friend. Some of Shomo's students visited her home for field trips that would end at her property. All of her students have been in her home. And so they all just want to say, like, this home was so beautiful. It was clearly so lovingly built and taken care of, taken care of. And, you know, we're just so sad that something like that could happen because, you know, we all would hate to lose our home. But it's I just can't express to people enough what this home was. To get in contact with Kelsey Tolbert about donations, you can email her, her at helpforsusieshomo at gmail.com. And you can get more information through the Facebook page titled Help for Susie Shomo. After the vehicle and pedestrian crash near Jamie's campus last weekend, reporter Alexa Bonilla has an update with emerging details and safety tips from someone near the scene. The JMU spokesperson confirmed that the pedestrian struck by a vehicle on Friday night right here at the intersection of South Main Street and Port Republic Road was a JMU student. The student has serious but non-life-threatening injuries. JMU junior Lexi Miller was riding by the intersection in an Uber when she thought a party had been shut down. When she saw first responders arriving to the scene, she realized something might be wrong. It's definitely freaky to think about how like fast something can change. After witnessing this, Miller has one message for JMU students. I just hope people stay safe and especially I know there's always a lot of accidents on that on port and um, just to be careful when you're driving, especially late at night on weekends. Reporting for Breeze TV, I'm Alexa Bonia. We'll now throw it over to political correspondent Regine Aranazari for a glimpse at politics throughout the nation. Regine. Thanks, Zoe, and welcome to Breeze TV Politics. A resolution in favor of a ceasefire in Gaza has been introduced to Harrisonburg City Council. Friendly City for Palestine is a local coalition advocating for Palestinian liberty and was formed after Israel declared war on Hamas in October. Mayor Deanna Reed encouraged members to contact local congressional leaders in response to their testimonies. The U.S. House has unanimously passed the Press Act, a bill that protects journalists from federal investigation of confidential sources. 49 states and the District of Columbia have laws protecting journalists from revealing their sources. However, there are no such protections at the federal level. The legislation seeks to enhance the First Amendment to ensure journalists can share information without the fear of retribution. A similar bill has been introduced in the Senate. In other news, Donald Trump is the first non-incumbent Republican candidate to win both the Iowa caucus and the New Hampshire primary. The former president and Nikki Haley are the only two GOP candidates that remain in the race. Although Joe Biden won the New Hampshire primary, many Democrats have concerns about his age and his handling of the situation in the Middle East. Exit polls found that New Hampshire voters consider the economy and immigration as the two most important issues on the ballot. A lot of elections are fought not to try to change people's mind, but to change what they're thinking about. And so, you know, the Democrats in, in the fall are gonna want to, you know, make it about reproductive rights and the Republicans might make it want, want to make it about illegal immigration and the, the, um, the influx uh, at the border. If you decided on your candidate ahead of Super Tuesday, polls are open for early voting. Polls open January 19th and will remain open until March 2nd before reopening on March 5th. The deadline to request an absentee ballot is February 23rd. 
Mail ballots must be postmarked by election day to be counted. You can vote at Harrisonburg City Hall Monday through Friday from 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. and 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on February 24th and March 2nd. Polls close at 7 p.m. on March 5th. That's all for politics this week. Zoe and Maggie, back to you. Thanks so much, Regine. Well, Zoe, what's coming up on the sports desk? Well, football finally went bowling over break, and our sports director, Colby Reese, recaps the historic season. Then, women's basketballs faced a tough loss at home, but how the team plans to use their Sunbelt trophy to push themselves forward. Plus, a new segment that highlights the standings around the sun. You don't want to miss what our sports team has this week. It's bow time. <laughs> Dude, we need gas. No, we gotta get those Supremes. We're not gonna make it. It's bow time, baby. So worth it. Right? I'm glad y'all ran out of gas. Boldly seasoned chicken Supremes with a biscuit fixin' and drink. It's bow time. <laughs> It's bow time. It takes 49 steps to bake a fluffy made from scratch Bojangles biscuit. But to make it a country ham biscuit, it takes 50. Get a fresh buttermilk biscuit today with a slice of juicy country style ham. It's bow time. Welcome back to the Sports Desk, your source for all things JMU Sports. This is Colby Reese. JMU football concluded its historic season on December 23rd, losing to Air Force in the Lockheed Martin Armed Forces Bowl 31-21. Since the bowl game, many players have transferred and new head coach Bob Chesney is putting in work to prepare for next season, the recruitment and also utilizing the portal. Chesney also announced his full coaching staff for next season. With a lot to catch up on, I am now joined by Bree Sports Editor Caden Bridges to give her final thoughts on what was a wild season for the Dukes. Thank you for joining me, Caden. Thank you for having me, Colby. 11-2 and two record overall, but just so much craziness, honestly, that happened this season. How do you sum up kind of what the season was for the football team? I mean, as you said, wild, chaotic. I don't think any of us could have predicted all of this to happen, you know? The team starts 10 and 0. Week two, coming back from an 11 point deficit against UVA, you know the 10 and 0 start, and then having college game day here for App State, the third time they've been in Harrisonburg, and then after the turmoil for six months between the NCAA and politicians and JMU, they do get their first bowl game. So, just crazy. So, but it was a cool ride and something definitely cool to be a part of. Yeah, and kind of. Also something that happened is Kirk Sinetti leaves for Indiana. Bob Chesney's hired shortly after that and just a few days before the transfer portal opened. So he's been busy. What has Chesney been doing since he was hired as JMU's ninth football coach in history? Well, he definitely has been busy. Uh, as you mentioned earlier, Chesney's staff is finalized. Three coaches following him from Holy Cross. Dean Kennedy is the offensive coordinator and the quarterbacks coach. Drew Cannon is the special teams coordinator and the tight ends coach. And Anthony DeMichel is the safeties coach and recruiting coordinator for the Dukes. Also, Chesney's keeping on staff um, associate head coach for the offense and offensive line coach Damian Robluski, who was the associate head coach for the Dukes bowl game, and Eddie Whitley Jr., both previously on Signetti's staff. So along with that, as you mentioned, he's been very busy with the transfer portal, bringing in four of his former players from Holy Cross, one being linebacker Jacob Dobbs, who will be a huge addition to the Dukes defense with the loss of Jalen Walker and Aiden Fisher going to Indiana. Uh, alongside Dobbs from Holy Cross is running back Tyler Purdy, offensive lineman Patrick McMurtry, and defensive back Terrence Spence. And there's no doubt a lot of changes for this team heading into next season. So what should Duke fans expect out of this 
you know, new team heading into a first year where they'll actually be eligible for a conference championship. Right. That is definitely something to look forward to. Also, I think Bob Chesney just brings a lot of energy. Um, you know, just him and his staff has, have been working so much recently and bringing in all these players. Just I think it's going we're going to see a lot of changes in the roster, but with that, a lot of energy and just excitement overall within the program, especially now that they are officially bowl eligible and past that two year transition. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Caden. It was an honor working with you and Jackson throughout this football season that, you know, can't believe it's over, but spring football will be here before we know it. Um, and we hope you all enjoyed our coverage and we thank everyone who bought or picked up Breeze's bowl game supplement. And now for the remainder of the sports desk, Pipe reporter Piper Hepler is in studio to give us an up, or we're going back to the main desk. All right, well, we're sorry about the technical difficulties here. Um, we, okay. Um, Jangles, Cajun Filet Biscuit. For breakfast, lunch, or dinner, nothing compares to our signature Cajun Spice Chicken Breast Filet on a made-from-scratch buttermilk biscuit. Breakfast so good, we serve it all day. Get the best chicken biscuit. The one, the only Cajun Filet Biscuit. For a limited time, get two Cajun Filet Biscuits for just $5. Bojangles, it's bow time. It's bow time. We gonna split this solo? No. Come on. Split the drive? No chance. What are you wearing? Split these? I thought you'd never ask. Introducing Bo's Barbecue Chicken Sandwich and Bo's Carolina Gold Chicken Sandwich. Boldly seasoned hand-breaded chicken topped with pickles, slaw, and your choice of two sauces. So good, you'll want to get both and split them with a friend. Download the Bojangles app and order ahead. It's bow time. Bojangles, Cajun Filet Biscuit. For breakfast, lunch, or dinner, nothing compares to our signature Cajun Spice Chicken Breast Filet on a made-from-scratch buttermilk biscuit. Breakfast so good, we serve it all day. Get the best chicken biscuit. The one, the only Cajun Filet Biscuit. For a limited time, get two Cajun Filet Biscuits for just $5. Bojangles, it's bow time. It's bow time. We gonna split this solo? No. Come on. Split the drive? No chance. What are you wearing? Split these? I thought you'd never ask. Introducing Bo's Barbecue Chicken Sandwich and Bo's Carolina Gold Chicken Sandwich. Boldly seasoned hand-breaded chicken topped with pickles, slaw, and your choice of two sauces. So good, you'll want to get both and split them with a friend. Download the Bojangles app and order ahead. It's bow time. This is Breeze TV.
Sorry about those technical difficulties, but now we're going to give you the rest of sports. It was sneaker night at the Atlantic Bank Union Center Wednesday as women's basketball took on Marshall. The Dukes began strong, holding a 19-8 lead after the first quarter. JMU had its biggest lead of the game at 14 with just under four minutes remaining in the first half. The Thundering Herd cut the deficit to four points heading into halftime. That momentum would continue for Marshall in the second half, outscoring JMU by eight in the third quarter and leading by 18 with just under five minutes remaining. Marshall would go on to beat JMU 77-70. The Herd remained undefeated in Sunbelt play, now holding an 8-0 conference record. With the Dukes starting the game strong and not being able to replicate that to begin the second half, the team knows that this will be a key mo emphasis moving forward. We just got to do better on defense, mainly. Despite the lot, the group is relying on its experiences from last season to push forward. We plan our game, learn, like I said before, learn from our losses because, you know, last year we had four or five losses and we ended up winning the Sun Belt. So, like, you just got to keep learning and keep improving and get better every time. James Madison will look for a bounce back performance on Saturday as they'll host App State at 4 p.m. Curious about where JMU sports teams stand in their conference? Well, Breeze TV Sports' new segment will provide a weekly update on the Sun Belt standings. Now, let's take a loop around the sun. First, starting with women's basketball, JMU is at fourth after the loss to Marshall. Marshall still has an undefeated record at the top of the conference with 8-0, and South Alabama is still looking for their first win in the Sun Belt this season. Moving on to the men's side of the court, JMU is second behind 7-1 App State, who they play tomorrow at 6 p.m. on ESPN2. As you can see, ODU brings up the bottom of the conference after losing to the Dukes this week. They're also tied with Southern Miss and Troy at 6-2. That's all from the world of sports this week. Zoe and Maggie, back to you. Thanks so much for all those updates, Piper and Colby, and we're coming up on the end. Current students share their journey of acceptance in one of the school's most competitive programs. Then, do you ever miss home? Well, this transfer student explains how she made JMU her home away from home. Plus, last week's freeze is turning into this week's breeze. Emily McKay has your weekend weather. All this and more after the break. Cajun Filet Biscuit for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Nothing compares to our signature Cajun Spice Chicken Breast Filet on a made-from-scratch buttermilk biscuit. Breakfast so good, we serve it all day. Get the best chicken biscuit. The one, the only Cajun Filet Biscuit. For a limited time, get two Cajun Filet Biscuits for just $5. Bojangles, it's bow time. It's bow time. We gonna split this solo? No. Come on. Split the drive? No chance. What are you wearing? Split these? I thought you'd never ask. Introducing Bo's Barbecue Chicken Sandwich and Bo's Carolina Gold Chicken Sandwich. Boldly seasoned hand-breaded chicken topped with pickles, slaw, and your choice of two sauces. So good, you'll want to get both and split them with a friend. Download the Bojangles app and order ahead. It's bow time. This is Breeze TV. Welcome back to Breeze TV. Our reporter, Madeline Gallagher, is in studio today to discuss one of JMU's most difficult programs. Madeline? A research study from the Virginia Engage Journal looked into burnout rates among various groups of people. According to researcher Anandaya Kundo, undergraduate students and professional nurses were the two groups that experienced burnout most frequently, with burnout rates as high as 70% among nurses. This made me wonder if the 2019 study had any val validity on our campus today. 
I sat down with current undergraduate nursing students and a local healthcare professional to find out more about their experience in their field thus far. According to NursingDegreeSearch.com, JMU's nursing program is in the top 8% of schools nationwide. With the JMU nursing program being one of the more competitive majors, students can confirm it's living up to its reputation. I just like felt dumb all the time, and I was so tired of like trying so hard to get like mid-grades. Another student shares her struggle to find balance in her schedule. You can have an exam coming up in a week, and you can feel you want to start studying for it, and you know you need to start studying, but... Maybe you had an 11-hour clinical you just got home from and you're exhausted and trying to actually sit down and study, but nothing's retaining. Students are required to complete 500 clinical hours to be able to graduate the nursing program, 90 of which need to be completed during their first semester after being admitted into the program. Though Meter was discouraged during her first semester, she can now apply her classes to valuable hands-on experience. And just because I don't do so well like on an exam or something doesn't mean I'm going to be like a bad nurse. Even with a taxing course load, the selective program allows students to connect on a deeper level. When like starting the program, be as friendly as you can. You have to find your people and not just like people to study with or get through clinicals with, but people who are going to uplift you and be your emotional support. You can't get through this program alone. You have to lean on each other. Many students in the JMU nursing program gain experience by shadowing at Santera. Heather Manley, a registered nurse at Santera, says even after 18 years of experience, she still recalls the difficulties and distractions that came along with being a nursing student. She shares her best advice for students who aspire to be in the field of healthcare. Prioritize what you really care about in your personal life. Make sure you still take time for yourself but try not to get caught up too much in the college lifestyle, the woohoo, we're here, let's party. While it can be fun, staying focused on your coursework. Nursing is only one of many competitive majors and programs JMU has to offer. If you've experienced difficulties of a challenging major, you can email jmubreezetv at gmail.com for an opportunity to share your story. That's all from me today. Back to you, Maggie. Thanks, Madeline. According to the National Institutes of Health, about 90 to 70 percent of college students experience homesickness at some point. In an effort to address common yet overlooked feelings of homesickness among students, JMU took the initiative to help students learn how to cope with emotional challenges that come away from being away from home. The Student Success Center held a seminar called Coping with Homesickness, where Carla Kale, who led the event, spoke to students about strategies to foster a sense of belonging and support among the student body. Transfer student Shannon Davis also shared some tips and tricks on overcoming homesickness. Just to get yourself out there, like if you feel like staying in one night, just get out, get, go for a drive, join clubs, organizations, and just get out there and get to know people, try different things. Davis also mentioned how it can be hard to get comfortable at a new school, but surrounding yourself with new people can help get you out of your comfort zone. Finnegan's Cove is a staple of downtown Harrisonburg. With its checkered floors, dim lighting, and witty wall signs, the open late dive bar is not typically what comes to mind when looking for love. But for these two JMU grads, Finnegan's was the perfect place to capture the moment. Loved by many from different walks of life, Finnegan's is a place for locals and college students alike. For Abby Griffin and Tyler Smith, it's where their love story began. Dressed up in a suit after a friend's wedding, Smith ended up at the local bar. Me and some of the guys that were in the wedding party uh, went to Finnegan's after, after the wedding, and that's where we met. I was yeah. at, um, at a party, actually, in college with a couple of my girlfriends and I was gonna leave and go home and my one friend was like, no, like let's go downtown, that kind of thing. And then she knew some people that he knew and it just so happened to, to work out and we met each other that night in Finney's. Yep. The two hit it off and discovered they went to the same high school. After two years of traveling and getting tattoos together, Smith popped the question in August 2023. Then, Griffin reached out to friend and Finnegan's bartender, Andrew Paw, to schedule an engagement photo shoot at the place that started it all. It made us feel like we did our job right because we created an environment, something for, for Tyler and Abby to be like, we want to come here, have our engagement photos here because I, I, how cool is it 
feel to be like, wow, I helped facilitate this special moment happening and that moment gets to be recorded here. The happy couple is set to get married this October and they have one goal for the future. Continuing a, a happy life together that stemmed from Finnegan's. Reporting for Breeze TV, I'm Maggie Rickerby. JMU students seem to be enjoying the warm temperatures after all the snow, but today might be the last day to enjoy this nice weather. Let's hear more from contributing reporter Emily McKay with this weekend's weather. Thank you, Maggie. That's right, Dukes. Temperatures are dropping this weekend and rain is projected to come. Sorry, we have a technical difficulty. Throw back to the desk, please. We apologize for those technical difficulties, but JMU welcomed the class of 2028 with early admission decisions released this past Tuesday. This year's pool of early action applicants is the most JMU has seen to date, with roughly 27,000 students, a 12% increase from 2023. This could mean this class may be JMU's largest yet. And guess what? That number could still grow as regular admission decisions are set to be released in mid to late March. Wow, class of 2028, that is crazy. Man. I can't believe it, honestly. Crazy, because I still remember when I got into JMU and now in May, guess what? We're walking that stage together, girl. Ooh, <laughs> nervous, but excited <laughs> to mm -hmm. see where everything brings us. And hopefully we'll see some new breezers next year. Yeah, some people to fill our shoes, right? All right, we'll see you guys same time, same place next week.